Hi, my name is José Berardo Cunha and this video is part of the series about mobile development architecture. Now it's time to sum up everything that we discussed before. So before you go ahead, I just want to recommend you to have a look at the previous videos if you haven't seen them before to have a better explanation of everything that we're going to discuss now. Now it's time to sum up all of the tiers that we created and we discussed in the previous videos. I left this area intentionally blank just because I'd like to add some labels in here that might help you to, to understand and identify the capabilities of those different tiers. But before we go ahead and start showing the labels, I'd like just to mention two different players that I've just added to this slide. The first one is Capacitor. Capacitor is a technology created by the Ionic team to replace what you can do with Cordova. So the Ionic team decide to create their own implementation of the Cordova layer. That makes sense because they are providing the whole environment for the developer. It seems fair for them to provide everything instead of depending on third parties. Capacitor is actually very new. What I can tell you so far is, as I said, a replacement for Cordova PhoneGap. You can use Capacitor not only for Ionic projects, you can simply create any sort of Node.js project and you can add Capacitor to your project. And with Capacitor, you'll be able to wrap your project in this web view and run in mobile devices. Capacitor also leverages Cordova plugins. You can still use Cordova plugins using Capacitor. And of course, you can still use Cordova with Ionic projects. They didn't say that it's necessary to replace your Cordova implementation from your project to Capacitor, but I believe at some point they will tell you that. They will tell you to use Capacitor instead of Cordova, and for the new projects, they will be starting from the beginning using Capacitor. That's just my opinion. Capacitor now is still in alpha release, but I don't know when I'm gonna watch this video. So probably when you see this video, Capacitor will be official or beta or even in new releases. Another player that I haven't mentioned before is Wix. Wix, as far as I can tell, is a web native solution created by Alibaba and they decide to incubate this in Apache Foundation. So part of it is open source. If I'm not mistaken, all the parts are still closed and controlled by the Alibaba team. But to be honest, I don't have much information on that. I just believe that it's good to have a look at this project, especially if you speak Chinese, because there is a huge Chinese community around this product. At the moment, that's not the same for English speakers, but if you speak Chinese, you probably feel like home developing your mobile app using Wix. So let's go ahead and see the first label. The first label here is better performance. I'm just classifying three layers. Of course, the lower you go, the more performant your app tends to be. But anyway, I can consider these three layers as having a better performance than everything above them. I'm just putting this web view as the threshold between what I believe is tending to be lower performance than something that tends to be more performant just because you can talk to native components. But you might argue that it's not as performant as native implementations, especially those ones that use the bridge. Remember that all web native apps have that bridge to translate your code. They are not actually compiled to native sequence, native bytecode sequence, to have them able to talk to the native environment. So this bridge might end up being the bottleneck for your app. But I still believe there's not a big deal in most of the case. You might consider this as better performance than everything above WebView. I'm not saying that actually everything above WebView is bad, is not performant, but I'm just saying that what is below that tends to be more performant. Probably it's easier for you to handle big amount of data when you have your users having to scroll or if you want to do some animations, transitions and some effects. It's probably easier to achieve this in the golden ratio of 60 frames per second if you go below the WebView. But anyway, I'm not telling, I'm not saying that it's impossible to achieve the same results above it. I'm just telling you that's better, that's easier to achieve that below the web view. Of course, everything below the browser is created to target app stores. What I mean by app store is not necessarily the app store itself. You can create this app and then you can install from other locations or maybe you can simply download from the internet and install. But anyway, if you're below the browser tier, you are creating an app that your users have to install into their devices. I remember when we discussed web apps versus mobile apps. 
At that moment, I was considering everything below the browser as mobile apps, not necessarily created using technologies in the native apps tier, the very lowest one here, but actually everything that you can install and use and leverage eventually native components or even if it's just native APIs, but you can go with native at some point if you're below the browser tier. On the other hand, you have this 0% install, which is actually something good because we discussed it before that web apps can achieve more users. When you have 0% install, you don't have the friction of sending users to the app store and telling them to please install my app. So after you install, you have your first contact with the app. At the end, just don't forget, all of those top tiers can be written using popular web frameworks. What I mean is you can create your project using Angular, React, Vue or whatever you, you choose in here and you can go all the way down using the same code base to reach those guys here and target two different platforms. In this slide, I'd like to bring up other solutions for mobile devices. You might have heard about Unity and Unreal, especially if you are a game developer. They are the two most popular game engines out there, but I left them out first because of their very specific purpose and second because of the bunch of logic already in place. I'd say consider them as pre-programmed softwares that provides you with physics in a number of other gaming related things, so they are more of complete platforms that compiles to different targets like mobile device, desktop OS or even web browsers than just frameworks or libraries. On Unit, you normally write scripts using C Sharp, so that would be my best bet for a game app, especially with a team high skilled in C Sharp but it's also possible to use other languages. Unreal, on the other hand, has its own script language, which is called Unreal Script or UScript. Let's consider them as cross-compiled apps, but let's leave them alone for the moment. Other mobile solutions that might be worth to have a look are Corona, which is another mobile cross-platform framework for games. Codename One is a cross-browser online platform to code in Java. You can code in Java and not only target Android, you can code in Java and also target iOS. Mobile Out Canvas, it's an online tool to convert website and I could see the especially WordPress websites into mobile apps. Another one is Row or Hole, I'm not sure how to pronounce this word, but it is an online tool to build apps in the cloud. And the last one, it seems promising to me, which is Fuse, it's a tool and a new marker language they call UX, that's a, an XML dialect, written in UNO. UNO is a C-sharp dialect that firstly compiles your code to C++ to achieve a better performance. It does allow JavaScript inside, but the main focus is on designers, so they tend to avoid any JavaScript and focus more on their markup language. I haven't used any of them, probably I'm saying something that's not actually 100% true, but at least I'd like to come up with this list so you can go and have a look by yourself and see if it's interesting for you. Let's start discussing what kind of questions, what kind of points you should consider in order to decide which tier you're gonna go for. So the first point is my app needs intensive CPU processors. If your app needs them, you might consider, you might prefer the native apps tier. So remember, as I said before, the lower you get, the more performant your app tends to be. I'm not saying that your app necessarily will be, but it seems easier for you if you go the lower as possible in those tiers I presented before. And also, if you really think that your app needs a very intensive process, please have a look at this NDK. So you might prefer writing part of your code in C++ and actually be across lower level issues. The second point is you should consider if your team is big enough to maintain two code bases. That's actually the main argument for every cross-platform implementation. They always say you shouldn't go with two different code base, but it turns out it's not necessarily 100% true. There are some companies that prefer to have two different teams so they can have different life cycles. They can target different users because at the end of the day, the users are expecting a way of interaction a little bit different. I think this argument is not very strong, at least nowadays, because those platforms themselves are becoming very similar. And I'd like to discuss this part in another video, but for now I'd like to say that you can and you should only consider the native apps only if your team is big enough to maintain. 
But another point you should consider is what your team does best. Believe me, that's something that I've seen taken for granted in some companies. They simply don't realize that they have to have a look what they actually do best. You should remember that every solution, they are all thinking what skills the developers that are going to create apps using them, what skills they have previously. Having that in mind, you can consider if your team is high skill C sharp team, why not go in with Xamarin, for example. Xamarin is probably the best fit for this kind of team because they know how to deal with C-sharp. They know the language, they probably know the mono environment, and everything else is just the mobile implementation. So it's just one part of the whole process that you have to learn. So I'm pretty sure the learning curve for this team will be much lower than any other implementation. In the same direction, I can tell about Java for Android. I'd say that Java is also very important if your team is high skilled for any other different outcome. If you use Java for web servers, if you use Java for REST APIs, or use Java for IoT device. So if you have a strong, a strong Java based team, why not you consider using Java for Android? Of course, you're not targeting iOS. So unless you use something like Codename One, as I mentioned before, you are not necessarily targeting iOS. Again, in the same direction, I can recommend you using JavaScript, one of the options that you have since the web native tier to the top. If your team is a very web-based team, I mean, if your team knows how to deal with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and a lot of different tools and frameworks and many other stuff, you should consider going with one of these web implementations. Another point is you should consider where your users come from. Remember having to install apps from App Store is an extra friction. Always remember that. If you don't have any answer for where your users come from, you should naturally go with web apps and then step by step provide progressive web apps capabilities to your project. This will make your app working offline, notifying your users, save the home screen, using web APIs for a number of different things. So I highly recommend you use web apps and especially progressive web apps if you don't know where your users come from. Actually, if you're not 100% sure that your user is going to download your app from the app stores, which is in my opinion, very difficult to happen. So if your team is in the case that use web implementations, let's have an extra discussion of what is the best fit in terms of web tiers. First of all, I'd like to say that you can use a mix of approaches. If you start a progressive web app, you can at some point add capabilities of web native apps or even hybrid apps. So from the starting point, you should create your web app if you want to target desktops, users that are not running your app for mobile device, of course, and for general discoverability. We discussed it before that the reach for web apps are at least three times higher than the mobile apps. You use any web app, or especially if it is a single page app, and of course, especially if it is a progressive web app, it will become more mobile friendly. Now what about the discussion between hybrid and native? You know that we have more two options below the browser tier. I'd say go hybrid when keeping layout consistency across all targets is the big deal. What I mean is if you actually want to provide exactly the same implementation or with minor differences between iOS and Android, you should go hybrid because this will be the implementation that will be easier for you. But on the other hand, you should go web native when the performance and the native user experience are the big deal. Let's say not exactly the performance because it depends on what exactly you're implementing, but at least the native user experience because web native solutions deal with the native components, they tend to have an experience more close to the native environment. And because of that, it's more difficult to keep your, your layout, to keep your look and feel consistent across iOS and Android. So if you feel like it's better to have this consistency, go hybrid. If you feel like this native user experience is actually better than have this middle ground consistent layer, you should go web native. That's the main point you're going to decide for your particular project. It depends on what exactly you're doing. Don't simply believe that one is always better than the other one. You have to consider what exactly you are targeting, what exactly you are aiming to do and go with web native or go hybrid depending on what you're doing.
So that leads to the end of the discussion. I presented to you in several videos the main capabilities of different tiers. And now I try from, from the business perspective, provide you with some questions and answers that you might think about in order to decide what's the best approach for you in your next project. If you like this video or if you like the series, I'd like to recommend you to subscribe to the channel, to thumbs up the video and also to activate notifications so you can be notified once I push other videos in the same idea. So one of the things I'd like to, to be creating very soon is one video especially talking about Ionic and I'd like to have an extra video which will be probably the last one of the series about choosing the right solution for you if you are not actually thinking on creating a new app but actually wanting to study to become a mobile developer so that's that's one of the points that i think is very interesting and probably will be the next video okay so yeah see you then thanks for watching please subscribe and yeah see you in the next video